Hey everyone, so this is going to be a video on putting in MIDI CC information, in my case Logic Pro 10, but the same principles apply in past versions, because I was on Logic 9 before and this was roughly the same method. Uh, I'm going to just mention in this case I'm using Hollywood Strings from East West Quantum Leap, and I'll quickly describe the patches I'm using. This is uh, Chelly Legato Slur Light Patch, you see it's Round Robin Light 6, which can be found in just the regular Legato Slur port folder. The next one's a Heavy Patch, and this is ch just Chelly Legato Slur, and this is in the Legato Slur port powerful system. I'll go over this second violin sus a bit later. But the main things to know is that uh, with the light patch, dynamics and vibrato are controlled by CC1, the mod will, or modulation. In the heavy patch, they separate the two functions. So CC1, modulation, will control vibrato, but dynamics are controlled by CC11, expression. Now, the way you input all this MIDI information is the same across multiple libraries, so don't think this only works for Hollywood Strings. There's many others use it. I have 8DO, other East West Quantum Leap libraries. I believe a lot of Cinebrass also uses it. There's a bunch of them, or any of the Cine samples. But anyways, I digress a bit. So the first and most obvious way is to just perform all the MIDI CC data as you record. I've had a little trouble with audio of being able to record it and then also hear it. So I'm sorry if this sounds awful as I'm playing this, but I'm just going to improvise a line. And at the same time, I'm going to use the mod wheel. Whoop, helps if I go to the beginning of each track. So in this case, I just recorded on the light patch, so I was just using the mod wheel. Now what you'll notice is that there's these black bars that appear, and that means there's MIDI CC data. It's not showing exactly which, and if you did it in the heavy patch, which I'll mute this and record and show off, I'll be playing with the mod wheel and expression wheel at the same time as I record this. So I was playing with both, but as you can see, you can't tell which one's which. But there's ways to see that, which I'll go over here. So I'm going to go over three ways to actually manually draw in this MIDI information. I'm not really a keyboard player, so it's very hard for me to accurately put in that information with the mod wheel and expression while trying to play something in. So we're going to go over a few methods of how to draw it in, which works best for me and many others. So, the first way is in the arrange window, which we're at right now. You're going to be using a thing called MIDI draw, or in past versions, it was also called hyper draw. So, I'm going to click on this light patch first. Make sure you click on the region. To do it in the arrange window, you go to view, MIDI draw, and because this is light patch, we're only going to be focused on modulation. Now over here, you see I set this to the pencil tool. It's usually on the marquee tool. But I set it to the pencil tool. So when I hold down command, it turns into a pencil. And this is where the term MIDI draw comes in. So we're focused, you see here on the right, it says one, which means we're controlling CC1. As it says, MIDI draw. You draw it in. Now CC1 data is in there. And I'll make it really broad so you can really hear it. Apologize for my computer jumping everywhere, but you can see that it's now controlling CC1. I didn't have to use 
the mod wheel or anything. I just drew it in. I'm just going to quickly undo that because I can show you the other methods. And the same principles apply if you're at the heavy patch, except this time, go to view, MIDI draw. And you can do the modulation again for your vibrato. But for dynamics, if you click expression, you see it says 11 there, which means we're now controlling CC11 or expression. Same thing. You just draw it in. And we'll quickly close these. And the nice thing about this, doing it in the arrange window, is you can see what's happening in both instruments. So I can see over here it goes like that. On this region, it goes like that. So that's the positive side of doing it in the arrange window. Now the downside, at least to me, is that to really get accurate, the bigger it is, the more accurate you can get with your drawing. But you can see how much room that is taking up. So you don't, you can't see all the tracks if you're really focused on that. So there's other options. What I prefer to do, I'll close these is use the piano roll. That's what I prefer. But there are m other methods in that which I'll go over. So what I'm going to do is open the piano roll. You'll see it right there. And whatever region I click on, it will change into that region here. Unfortunately, they're the same melody, so it's not going to look any different. In this case, we're clicked on the light patch, so this is that region. So MIDI draw is located right here and it opens up this bottom portion of the piano roll which is adjustable in height you can make it really big which will cover up a lot of the actual piano roll itself or you can put it down low where you see a lot of the piano roll but you can't see a lot of the MIDI draw I prefer to put it somewhere in the middle about there because the bigger it is once again the more accurate you can get with it so it's nice to have a nice medium. So it's essentially the same principle. You just go over here and look, there's your modulation, there's your expression. In this case, it's the light patch, so we only really have to worry about modulation. And the thing I like about using piano roll is that you can see the contour of the line. So this is a nice melody. Maybe as it goes up here, I might want it to crescendo a bit go down just a little bit down to that note, a little low in volume, but then really leap up here when it makes the leap. And because the rest of it goes down, it might want a little decrescendo. So we can use the pencil tool again by going here, pencil. We can draw that in, make just that a little crescendo. Right there, a little decrescendo, big crescendo, and downwards. And now it appears. So that's one way to do this, but there's a few other tricks you can pull off in the piano roll. I'm going to undo that. You can also just click, and it'll just draw nice little straight lines. But that's not the most realistic method, because a real performer's not going to play in perfectly straight lines. And this is where I love this little tool called the Automation Curve Tool. Now, because I replaced the pencil, just hold down Command, and it changes the white. And now if I push the mouse down, you'll see it makes the curve inward. So it plays and just crescendos a little bit, and then I have it set so I line it up with these two little notes. That's where it really starts to crescendo. And you'll see it just appeared. All you have to do if that happens is just click here a few times, and it's back. And you can also pull it over here. I can push it out, and there's a different curve there. And that makes it just a little bit more realistic. It's not perfectly straight lines. And it's just a thing to experiment with. Sometimes it will give a little S. Sometimes a little random, but it'll, there we go. Make sort of a little S, which can be pretty wild, but fun. And once again, you can just go over to expression. If we're on the heavy patch, we would draw in here. So as I said, the advantage of this is there's plenty of room to work in, and you can see the nice contour of the line. Now, another way of putting in all this information, as you see, those black lines appeared again here. So go to MIDI draw, modulation. That's what we drew in. So it will show up there as well that all connects like that. 
and I'm quickly just going to go and delete all that information real quick. I'll talk about this area just a bit for another nice trick. But the next way you can draw on MIDI information, which also has its advantages and disadvantages, is the step editor. Once again, you got to make sure you click on the region you're going to work with. Delete this link because I want to show you how to make that. So this is what the step editor looks like. Change that real quick. And when you first open it, this is what it's going to look like. Now you see here the all velocities, that's where each note begins. And I'll quickly go over why I think this is a disadvantage of using, or one of the disadvantages of using the step editor. You can see where notes begins, but you can't see the contour of the lines or anything. Now, if you have a very memorable melody, it's very easy. You can just remember, oh, that goes, that part goes up, that part goes down. But if you're working with a long string pad, it can be a little harder. So if it's just long suspended chords, it may be a little harder to remember where it goes up, where it goes down. But the big advantage of using the step editor, I should also mention, in piano roll, it's very easy to edit notes. If you don't like anything, you can adjust the length and such. But the big advantage of the step editor is you can see multiple CC parameters at once, as well as other parameters, such as pitch bend and such. Now you see, when you first open it, expression won't be here. So all you have to do is go to lanes, create lane. So the same modulation again, but you just go here and change it to expression. Now the next part, make sure status is set to control. And then you can check mark number and simply change it to expression. And now you're controlling, oh, didn't save the name. Now you can see both modulation and expression. And for the heavy patches, this is wonderful because you're controlling vibrato with one and expression with the other. Now the other trick in here Right now, this grid is set to 16th notes. Each one can adjust separately, so I like to set it to as small as I can get. So 164th is great because it really provides more accuracy. In the case beforehand that we wanted a bigger looking lane to get accurate, this one, we want the smaller grids because if I were to set expression, say to half notes, it changes every half note, which is pretty, you wouldn't want that, in my personal opinion, maybe you do. Now the other thing I set here, I should point out, is I set the main tool to pencil, and the secondary to eraser, and the reason why I do this is, you're going to be doing a lot of drawing in here, so it makes it very easy, and if you don't like anything, Command, erase. So you can draw there. Now, once again, you can see both at the same time. And now I'm going to close out of this. Actually, let's pull it back up. And I'm just going to move it down here. So we drew it all in this region. So now if I go to this region, we can see the curves we drew in here, once again, sync up with that. You know, it's raising up here, going down and raising back up. And if I switch this to expression, oh, so I drew that into pitch bend. If I go to expression, You'll see, just drew it in with it. Now, I mentioned this window earlier. I'm going to use it here to show you a very nice little trick that I use all the time, especially when I'm making long suspended string pads underneath a melody or such. So here I already wrote a melody on the light patch, so modulation. You can see the 
that I already drew in. Now, this is a second violin sus patch from the long, powerful system, as you see right there. Now, what this means is this is another patch that separates CC11 and CC1, separates dynamics and vibrato. Well, because this is a light patch, everything was done with CC1 modulation. And let's say I want the same dynamic curve as this. Well, it'd be a little bit of a pain to have to go in and completely draw everything similar with the expression, except using an expression set of modulation. So here's a very neat trick. You go here, go to your event list here, list editor. And what you can do here, you see here's a note, and it says all the different things controlling. Click one with the modulation. Click edit, select, similar events. So now it's selected all the modulation events, and we're just going to Command C copy. Click on this region, Command V, paste. Now, as we mentioned before, we copied modulation data CC1, which that's controlling vibrato. We want it to control dynamics. Very simple way to change that. Simply go back, select all once again, or similar events. Make sure you click on the region you want to change. Right here where it says number, click that. You see 11 equals expression. You see it disappeared from CC1. And now if we go look at expression, it's moved there. Now the dynamics in here are the same dynamic curve up here, except we're using, of course, the light patch and the heavy patch. So really, it's a simple process. I may not have covered anything. If you still have more questions or I didn't cover something enough, feel free to leave a comment or a message, and I will try to answer as best I can. But I hope this helps, and happy composing.